dear learners today we are going to discuss a very important area of price discrimination in the market analysis as the name suggests price discrimination refers to a situation wherein different price is charged from different customers uh this price may be for the same service or a little different service there may be a little difference in the quality of service but yes the price is different this is known as price discrimination when a monopolist sells an identical product to different customers at different prices it is called discriminatory monopoly that's a different situation altogether but normally when the same product or a little differentiated product is sold at different prices to different customers it's called price discrimination uh, there i mean before proceeding further let me give you some examples for example in a train if one travels from a particular destination say delhi to bhopal in between this distance a certain ticket is being charged from the normal class passengers but from the sleeper class passengers some additional money is charged train is the same only the facility is a little differentiated similarly for ac 3 charges increase for ac 2 charges increase further and for ac 1 charges increase the maximum so this kind of discrimination is applied by the monopolist uh, when different prices are charged for either the same product or for the differentiated product or service this is known as price discrimination now what are the basis of price discrimination there are different basis of price discrimination one is income income means purchasing power purchasing power of customers location as to where the customers are located age group sex that is male or female quantity being purchased like somebody may purchase a very small quantity whereas others may purchase a very large quantity or they may make bulk purchases frequency of purchases that is how many times the purchases are made in one business cycle and what is the purpose of use this again very very important as to what is the purpose of use what do we mean by the purpose of use uh, l- l- let me give you a very simple example of lpg lpg for domestic purposes sells at a lower price whereas lpg for commercial purposes sells at a higher price similarly electricity for industrial use is given at a higher price but electricity for agriculture is given either free or at a subsidized price so this is the purpose of use a basis of discrimination then further uh, there are some other basis of discrimination uh, but then we will be discussing those in the course of this discussion sometimes a doctor may charge or a lawyer may charge a different fee from dis- different customers say if a poor customer comes to a doctor or to a lawyer they may charge a very small fee but if a rich customer comes or a normal customer comes then they charge the normal fee similarly children or senior citizens when they travel in the train or in the buses they are charged less amount of fare similarly discounted rates are allowed to bulk buyers those who are the bulk buyers they get the facility of discounted rates similarly i told you earlier charges for electricity for different uses are different because electricity can be used for a very large number of purposes it can be used for running the trains it can be used for lighting the homes it can be used for heating it can be used for cooling it can be used for industrial purposes manufacturing purposes it can be used for agriculture so it has to be seen as to what is more important whatever is important that has to be taken care of 
and without uh, thinking about the purpose nothing can be finalized about it so purpose is very very important as to for what purpose the commodity is going commodity or service is going to be used so this this is again uh, an example of distinction and i told you a little earlier in a train travel also different uh, charges are there for differentiated product there is some difference in services but the difference in fare is really very high so price discrimination is common in monopoly but it is practiced in all situations of imperfect competition price discrimination in monopoly it's it's really uh, common because the monopolist can truly exercise the price discrimination but wherever the market is imperfect the price discrimination can be applied what are the necessary conditions for implementation of price discrimination or in other words when will price discrimination be profitable or good so number 1 wherever imperfect competition exists price discrimination is profitable if there are perfection if the market is perfect then nothing can be done but under imperfect competition price discrimination is always good S similarly markets must be distinct because if the markets are close by then resale is possible buyers will buy the goods and resell these goods in the nearby markets but if the distance is too much in that case it will not be profitable for the buyers to buy the material at a different rate from one location and sell it at a higher rate in another location so that this markets must be distanced this is the second condition the first is imperfect competition must exist and the second one is market must be distant so that transport costs they render the resale useless that there, there is no profit in uh, reselling similarly price elasticity of demand in dif uh, is different in different markets price elasticity what is price elasticity of demand you must have studied it by now as to what is the price elasticity that means if say 10% price increases and the quantity demanded also decreases by 10% this means elasticity is equal to 1 when price decreases by 10% and quantity demanded increases by 12% it is said that the elasticity is greater than 1 and on the other if the price decreases by 10% but the quantity demanded increases only 8% this simply means that elasticity elasticity is less than 1 i would like to illustrate this for you with the help of a diagram in in, in a diagram it will be better to understand the elasticity of demand now supposing in this diagram on x axis the quantity has been showed shown and on the y axis the price of the commodity has been shown now this is the demand curve d d this is the demand curve now in this demand curve what you notice is supposing this is the price op and this is the quantity oq being demanded now supposing the price falls by p1 so you will notice that the quantity which will be demanded now will be oq1 it simply means roughly whatever is the fall in price the same is the increase in quantity demanded so e is equal to 1 in this situation but if this curve goes on moving and becomes a straight curve then what will happen let us see in this diagram very close by
this is again quantity and this is price supposing the demand curve moves to the right and it just becomes a straight line this is the demand curve d d now what will be the position like quantity doesn't change whatever is the available quantity in the market it's not going to change whatever may be the price say for example there is price p now the price may either increase to p1 or it may decrease to p2 in both these situations you will find that quantity available in the market is the same this doesn't change oq is the quantity so elasticity is equal to zero that means there is no difference there is no difference on the quantity usually whenever there is a price change its reflection on quantity is also available but in this case there is no reflection and similarly if this dd curve becomes a horizontal line then what might happen let us have a look at it see this is x axis this is y axis over here this is quantity and over here this is price now this has become the shape of the demand curve d d now price is fixed at p and quantity may vary to any point from 0 to infinity that means if the curve is such then the elasticity is equal to infinity in between these two situations we find most other situations and i can draw all those in one curve only so you may so that you may have a better idea see now i'll be giving different names this is dd this is d1 d1 and over here the situation is e is equal to 0 if i draw a curve like this now there is a movement from here it has come to this side but not much so in that this is say for example d2 d2 now in this curve e is less than less than 1 and if it moves more uh, if it is only up to 45 degree say for example this is a curve d3 d3 in order to measure the elasticity of this kind of a curve which is known as rectangular hyperbola then you need to draw a tangent line and if a tangent line is drawn then it is it touches at 45 degree angle and if it is 45 degree angle then in this case e is equal to 1 and the last situation d4 in this case the demand curve slopes a little downwards like this like this this is d4 d4 in this case you'll notice that when there is a little change in price quantity demanded increases much more proportionately so for this kind of a curve e is greater than 1 now these are the situations that we get e is equal to infinity e is greater than 1 e is equal to 1 e is less than 1 e is equal to 0 these are the five degrees of elasticity of demand 
Now you can uh, watch it for yourself that this situation of infinity and this situation of zero is usually not found in the market. So actually in the market you find these three situations wherein elasticity is greater than one. This symbol shows facing E greater than and if the symbol faces the nu 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 numerical value that means it is less than 1. So E is greater than 1, E is equal to 1, E is less than 1. As I said earlier, if the price falls by 10% and quantity demanded increases by 10%, say if the price falls by 10% and quantity demanded increases by 12%, this is the case of E is greater than 1. If the price falls by 10% and the quantity demanded increases by 10%, this is the case of elasticity is equal to 1. If price falls by 10% and the quantity demanded increases by 8%, this is the case of elasticity is less than 1. Normally, when elasticity is equal to 1, then it is a 45 degree line, line drawn at 45 degree. In that case, it is always equal to 1. So, I just wanted to, before talking about the elasticities, so when elasticities in two markets are different, the price discrimination can be a favorable exercise. If the elasticities in two markets are not different, then this may not be a profitable exercise. Over here, the purpose of giving all this idea to you was that this is how the elasticities of demand are understood. If the curve is a flatter one, this shows E is greater than 1. Just see, if this much is a fall in price, see how much is the increase in quantity? This is more, this is more and this is less. And if it is a straighter curve, then you will notice this is the fall in price and this is the increase in quantity. So fall in price is more, increase in quantity is less. And if it is a 45 degree line, then you will notice whatever is the fall in the price, same is the increase in quantity. This is the elasticity. Now we may proceed with the lecture other than that on the whiteboard. So, what are the necessary conditions for, for price discrimination? One, that there has to be imperfection in the market. Market has to be imperfect. Second, markets must be distinct. If the markets are close by and price discrimination is followed, then customers may buy it from one market and resell it in another market and price discrimination will not be successful. So the second one is that markets must be distinct and third is price elasticity should be different in different markets. Usually the sale is executed at the MR. MR means marginal revenue. Marginal revenue refers to that revenue which is to be realized by the firm on the sale of one additional unit in the market. So when is a firm going to sell one additional unit in the market? The firm is going to sell one additional unit in the market only when the price is favorable for it. So when MR matches the firm's expectations, then only the firm sells the product. So if there are two markets and MR is different in both the markets, then of course different pricing will be applied in both the markets. And why is it that this MR is different in two different markets? It is because of price elasticities. According to the elasticities, the MR also keeps on going up and down because there are certain commodities which are necessary for life. Their demand is always inelastic. And there are certain items which are luxuries and the demand for luxuries is always elastic. Accordingly, the MR also varies. So if the MR varies, then of course it is possible for the monopolist to take advantage of it. 
Now degrees of price discrimination. Degrees, when we talk about degrees of price discrimination, we are referring to the extent to which market can be divided and advantage can be taken by the monopolist or the market here. So, Pigu in his book Economics of Welfare says that there exist three degrees of three degrees of price discrimination. In the first degree, entire consumer surplus is extracted. In the second degree, not the entire consumer surplus is extracted, but most of it is extracted. These are the two degrees and in the third degree of uh, price discrimination, it is done when demand curves with diff different price elasticities exist in different markets. The markets are um, far off from one another and then only it is applied. So let us discuss these degrees one by one. The first is the first degree of price discrimination. This is called the limit of price discrimination. Why? Because in this case, the marketeer takes away the entire consumer surplus, whatever is the consumer surplus taken away by the monopolist. And it is possible when the seller knows the price each buyer is willing to pay. Or in other words, the monopolist knows buyer's demand curve for the product. What is the demand curve for the product of a particular buyer? It's known to the monopolist. So what the monopolist does? Firstly, the monopolist sells price, sets price at the highest level, where all those who are willing to buy purchase at least one unit each of the commodity. When the consumer surplus of this section is exhausted, the monopolist gradually lowers the price so that the consumer surplus of the users of the subsequent units can be extracted. Now this process is continued until the whole consumer surplus is available at a price where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost and it stands extracted. This is the first degree of consumer's surplus. Now, second degree of consumer surplus. This second degree of consumer surplus applies to block system. What do we mean by block system? Block pricing is applied by the monopolist. What is this block pricing? There are different buyers who buy commodities in different blocks where the buying is bulk. They make bulk buying. In this case, price discrimination is possible from different categories of buyers. So the number of buyers must be large. Price rationing should be effective. As in the case of utilities like telephone system, electricity, etc. The demand curve for all the consumers is identical and a single rate is applicable for a large number of buyers. This is the situation when the second degree of price discrimination can be applied. Now, let me put it again for the benefit of you all. What is the second degree? This second degree is applied in the case where bulk purchasing is made by the buyers. So where buyers make bulk purchases, then in different markets, different prices are charged by the monopolist for different blocks, other other uh, different blocks. There are different blocks and, and e different prices charged from each block. Now, this can be seen with the help of this diagram. It can be graphically illustrated with the help of this diagram. Have a look at this diagram. There is demand curve D1, D1. And in this demand curve, there is a point A and at point A, OP quantity is being, OP price is being charged for OQ quantity. Then you must be noticing that price is lowered to OP1 and the quantity which is being purchased at this price is OQ1. And this point is available 
at B on the demand curve. Similarly, we have yet another lowering of prices P2 and here the quantity increases even further. So now you will notice that there is one block for which OP price is being charged. There is another block for which OP1 price is being charged and there is yet another block for which OP2 price is being charged and maximum quantity is available to this OP2. Why? Why this less price? Because they are wanting to purchase, make purchases in huge quantities. Similarly, the middle one, which is at B. At this point, you will notice that price has been lowered because quantity demanded is also more. And for the first block, which is available at point A on the demand curve, you will notice that the price is higher for the lesser quantity. So for block 1, OP, price OP is for quantity sold OQ. Price OP1 is being offered for the additional quantity that is QQ1. Price OP2 is available for the additional quantity, still additional quantity Q1, Q2. And accordingly, the total revenue of the monopolist can be calculated and this total revenue of the monopolist in this process is the highest, which may not be otherwise. See, what will be the total revenue of monopolist? First, OP price into OQ quantity. Then plus OP1 price into QQ1 quantity. Plus OP2 price into Q1, Q2 quantity. Now, if only one price OP was charged, maximum profit could not have been taken by the monopolist. Because price has been different for three different for three different blocks. So as a result, the monopolist has been able to charge the maximum profit. This is known as the second degree of price discrimination. And in this situation, the monopolist is able to extract the maximum consumer surplus, but not the total consumer surplus, as in the case of first degree. Now the third degree. In the third degree of uh, price discrimination, we notice that different demand curves with different price elasticities exist in different markets. And uniform price will not be charged now because demand curves are different and markets are distinct. Naturally, therefore, the monopolist will be better placed if he or she charges different price in different markets. So, uh, the monopolist will not allocate entire amount in entire quantity in one market. Prices in each market shall be kept at marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost so that the profit is maximized. Now it can be illustrated once again with the help of a diagram. Now this is the total market. And for total market AR and MR both are given. This is the AR and this is the MR. Actually, as you must be knowing, AR is the demand curve. AR is the demand curve of the market and marginal revenue curve is the uh, price, shows the price at which the quantity is to be sold. Now, if we know the market's marginal cost, this is supposing the cost curve. This is MC of the market, marginal cost curve. Wherever marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue, it is at that point that the price will be fixed. So this will be the price, supposing this is E, then from E to Q, this is the price. At E, Q price, O, Q quantity can be offered by the monopolist. This is the situation of total market.
Now there are markets at different locations. Say for example, this is one market and this is second market. Now what we do is, we know obviously average revenue curve and marginal revenue curve will be different in both these markets. But price has been fixed in considering the total market conditions which is at MR is equal to MC. This is MC, this is MR at this point E. You must be noticing that MR is equal to MC. MR is equal to MC. Any marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. So we draw a perpendicular line in the reverse direction. And then we have the two AR curves with different elasticities of course AR and MR. Similarly in this case also we have this AR curve and a different MR curve. This is market at location B. This is location A. These are the markets in two locations. One is location A, the other one is location B. So you will notice that for market B, this is the quantity OQ, right? And the price will be, it is, it is to be decided by AR, the profit of the monopolist. This goes up. Say, for example, it is at point A. And this we may call as E2. And over here, you will notice that this is the point where MR and MC are equal. Here also, everywhere at point E, you will notice that MR is equal to MC. So price has been decided at this point. Now the issue is how much profit is being made then this has to be checked with AR. So if we will extend it further and it touches here at point B. This is E3. Right? And over here you notice that it's uh, the same because cost has been decided by, the price has been decided by in the market by the monopolist. This has been fixed. So this is fixed and in both the markets. Now in individual markets, the MR and AR are different. In one market, you have a different set of AR and MR. In another market, you have a different set of AR and MR. So wherever MR and MC are equal, that is the equilibrium point. That is the decision about price. This is the decision of price E2 and how much profit is being made. So the line has to be extended a little up. And because this is the average revenue, this is the average revenue being collected by the firm. Similarly, over here, the price is decided at E3, but the uh, average revenue curve is above, as a result, the profit is above. So now, if you notice that in this quantity, in this market, market A, OQ quantity shall be sold. at OE price OE2 and in market B OQ quantity shall be sold at OE3 all right, now this A and B, they define the income. So actually this much of price is being charged. 
this much of price is being charged and you must be noticing that this is more and this is less in the diagram itself so what a monopolist does in different markets which are distanced that is there is no chances of resale from this market this ma in this market the goods are being sold cheaper so the buyers cannot take goods from this market and sell in this market to take the advantage of the situation it is not possible then only such a situation is possible so this is the third degree of price discrimination so we noticed that in the third degree of price discrimination marginal revenue and marginal cost curve of the market they decide the equilibrium price and the quantity to be sold then this quantity is distributed in the two markets and you must have noted that oq quantity is available in market uh, one market and oq one quantity is available in another market so in these two markets different quantities are being offered by the monopolist so these are the three degrees of price discrimination as explained by pigu the first one is first degree wherein total consumer surplus is extracted by varying the price first the price is kept higher then it is lowered then it is further lowered and finally entire consumer surplus is extracted by the monopolist in the second one block wise sale is being made for different blocks different prices are being charged and in that process the monopolist maximizes uh, its profits finally in the third degree you note you noted that the markets have to be distanced these markets are different they are uh, supposing in case of foreign markets it is possible in case of such markets there are legal restrictions it is possible that from one market the goods cannot be sold in the other market there also it is possible so the market curves decide the quantity to be sold and the cost this is the cost of the firm so cost gets known once the cost gets known we get to know as to what happens in the two different markets and this is how the monopolist maximizes uh, the profit now let us summarize what all we have studied charging different prices from different customers in different markets charging different prices for slightly differentiated product this is known as price discrimination it can be attempted under imperfect competition only and usually by a monopolist price discrimination is exercised on different basis say on location income age frequency of purchase quantity of purchase etc then what are the conditions for uh, exer uh, for exercise of price discrimination the first one is market should be imperfect second one markets must be distanced and and the third one is that the elasticities in different markets should also be different and there are three degrees of consumer surplus first degree second degree and third degree in the first degree entire consumer surplus is extracted in the second degree not the entire sur consumer surplus is extracted rather uh, some is left with the consumers and in the third degree it is possible when different prices are being charged at different places usually in foreign markets like one market is Uh, uh within the nation and the another market is outside the nation in some other country then it is possible or where there is a legal restriction then it is possible or when the distance is so much that transport cost will make a big difference then also it is possible so this is all about uh price discrimination under monopoly thank you very much